I'm Pat Keown, a research analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper, and I'm here to speak to you about FunFlow's activity for the week ended Wednesday, October 5th. Let's start this review by taking a quick look at that week's market activity. The S&P 500 index was off uh, just a little bit, 0.54%, and what was a mixed week of trading. Uh, the uh, the S&P was held back and the broader equity markets were held back uh, by some more news out of the Federal Reserve as well as uh, some, some concerns out of Europe this week as well. Let's start with Europe. Well, Brexit got back in the news last week. Uh, UK Prime Minister Theresa May uh, stated that uh, UK, the UK will start to unwind from the European Union approximately at the end of Q1 in 2017. And the other troubling concern, and what was maybe a little bit newer than Brexit, was Deutsche Bank AG. Uh, there was news of the U.S. Justice Department looking to, to hit the bank with a, a potential of a $14 billion fine uh, in re, for some questionable uh, trading in mortgage, past, uh, past trading in mortgage securities. And this raised fears uh, across the continent of a possible banking contagion similar to what we saw during the global financial crisis in 2008. And let's turn back to domestic uh, issues now. Uh, I stated the Fed was active again last week. Uh, in one day, two different Fed presidents stated that as long as the economy continues as it is, uh, we can expect interest rate rises on the near horizon. Uh, well, that, let's turn our attention back now to fund fl the fund flows activity now. We'll start by taking a look at our fund macro groups. Uh, last week, we saw equity mutual funds had net outflows of $7.7 billion. Taxable bond funds took in about $598 million in net new money. Muni bond funds continued the streak with $232 million in net inflows. And money market funds saw approximately $28.5 billion leave their coffers. Uh, let's take a closer look at the equity mutual fund group now. The $7.7 billion in net outflows marked the 30th consecutive week of outflows for the group. This brings their year-to-date net outflow to just over $140 billion, and at this pace, it'll be the highest net outflow for the group since 2008, when they saw about $200 billion leave. Uh, looking at last week's activity, we see uh, the, the usual trend where there's more outflows from domestic equity funds, about $5 billion, than non-domestic equity funds, about $2.7 billion. But I wanted to speak a little bit more about non-domestic equity this week. This is the 14th out of the last 15 weeks where we've seen net outflows, during which time they've had about $17.5 billion leave. Much of this is tied to, the, it appears that this investor sentiment is tied to the Brexit vote, because that's when the outflow, outflow streak started. And uh, again, this would be, if it continues at this pace, they've had about $9 billion leave so far year to date. This would also be the highest net outflow since the global financial crisis if it continues at this rate. Okay, let's move on to uh, the next equity group, equity ETFs. The group had outflows also last week, about $1.4 billion. Uh, the largest outflows belong to PowerShares QQQ, had about $826 million leave, followed by the followed by Spider, Dow Jones Industrial Average, which had about $640 million leave. And on the plus side, we saw the iShares Core MSCI Emerging Markets ETF take in about $443 million. Let's move on to our taxable bond macro groups now. We'll start with mutual funds. Uh, this group had net inflows of roughly $600 million last week. Uh, the major players uh, last week were Core, bond, excuse me, core Plus bond funds, took in uh, net new money of roughly $640 million, and loan participation funds took in about $270 million. Moving on to the taxable bond ETFs now, we see that the, the group uh, had large inflows last week, about $2.3 billion. Uh, a high-yield product leading the way here, the iShares iBox high-yield corporate ETF, had $1.2 billion in net inflows. Second largest uh, was the iShares Core U.S. Ag, had about $470 million. And on the sell side, we see the iShares iBox investment grade having about $430 million to leave their coffers. Okay, that finishes, wraps up that category. Let's move on to the Muni Bond Fund group now. And the streak continues, 53 straight weeks for the group of net inflows. They had net inflows of roughly $232 million last week. As usual, the major players came from the national muni categories, with the largest inflow belonging to general, the general muni bond group, had about $93 million in net inflows, followed by intermediate, intermediate muni debt, 
had about $80 million in net inflows. Let's move on to our last grouping now, money market funds. The volatility continued last week in money market funds. A uh, total of $28.5 billion in net outflows, uh, led by institutional money markets, uh, with out net outflows of $74.3 billion, and a uh, large net inflow for institutional U.S. government mo money market, about $45 billion. As we've spoken about in the past, we, we suspect that this, this, this level of volatility is tied to the new money market regulations, which are scheduled to go live at the end of next week. Well, that wraps up this week's report. If you'd like to take a, look at the, a closer look at the data yourself, please join us at our website, www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week, where another one of our analysts will be speaking about that week's fund flows activity. Thank you.